Stephen A., what team needs to get this draft pick right the most? It's got, it's got to be the New York Knicks. It's mm. got to be the New York Knicks. It's the media capital the world. It's the number one market in America. Uh, this is a moral burn, uh, a franchise that just can't. They, 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 I mean, we're going to call the New York Knicks can't get right. That's what, that's, that's what we need to call it from, 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 from. What was that movie with Martin <laughs> oh, Lawrence stop. and Eddie Murphy and them? Life. You know, uh, life. Can't get right. Life, life. Life. Right. Can't get right. Can't get right. That's what we're going to call the New York Knicks. Obviously, we're not talking about Porzingis because they got that right. But don't get me started with everybody else. At the end of the day, here's what it comes down to for the New York Knicks. Uh, whether it's Michael Porter Jr., uh, Trey Young, uh, Sexton, Bridges, at the ninth pick, at least two of those guys should potentially fall in your direction. You got to pick the right one. You're the New York Knicks. You just got to do it. Part of it is because Phil Jackson sabotaged you by picking, uh, picking Neil Aquina, passing on Dennis Smith Jr., passing on Donovan Mitchell, passing on Malik Monk. Don't get me started with that man stealing money from James Dolan like a thief in the night. But in the end, what it comes down to, if you're the New York Knicks, you just got to get this right. Mm. You got to draft a player that's going to start for you and is going to produce for you. They don't necessarily have to be a star. If it's Trey Young, it's boom or bust. I think he's box office. That's somebody that they obviously should consider very, very strongly. But you got to get somebody that can be inserted into your starting lineup. Somebody, Molly and Max, mm -hmm. that isn't making back page news yeah. just because he scored 15 points one game. Like, my God, stop the presses. Did you <laughs> see what this dude did today? He scored 15 points. That's what they did with Neil Aquina when he scored 15 points in a game earlier this regular season. That cannot happen. You're the New York Knicks. 2019 is very important. You're anticipating having cap space. There's going to be marquee free agents, the Klay Thompson, the Jimmy Butlers, the Kyrie Irvins, potentially Kevin Durant's out there. You want to have something in place alongside Kristaps Porzingis that says if you come to us, you can really, really make a difference in Gotham City towards the New York Knicks being a credible franchise that's trying to win a championship sometime in the near future. In order to, to, in, to just ingrain that belief, you have got to get this pick mm -hmm. right. I'm saying it's the Knicks. I say it's the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, look, really? they didn't trust the process enough. The process was working, but it was a long-term plan of stinking for a long time mm -hmm. because Sam Hinkie knew that you're not going to get every draft right. He didn't get Okafor right. Stephen A., you mentioned the Knicks got Porzingis right. Not really. Everyone knew the presumptive number ones, two, one, two, and three picks in whatever order. Everyone knew Carl Anthony Towns was going one, and then who would go second and third between D'Angelo Russell and Jaleel Okafor. That was known. And then after that, there was going to be Porzingis, who was going to go four. The Knicks got Porzingis. Had they drafted second, they wouldn't have gotten Porzingis. I bet you they would have taken Okafor. So, like, they got that right by accident. I, so, I, I hear you. They need to get something right. I don't have a lot of confidence that they will because they don't usually seem to unless it falls into their lap, like their hand is forced. But the Philadelphia 76ers were getting things right. Number one, the overall strategy. Stink for a long time. Get multiple high-level picks because you're going to miss some. So, they hit on Embiid. They hit on Simmons. They missed on Okafor. And then Hinky was out. Colangelo was in. I said at the time that was a bad idea. I didn't think Colangelo was a very good GM. Obviously, I was proven right about that, and and it and it ended, it, it, you know, bad for for, That's for not, all involved. Come on, Max. Well, come on, come well, on, Max. Listen. The whole controversy doesn't prove that he did he he did a bad job as a GM. It just means that he was well, a, I think a, he, him or his wife or whatever. They 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 messed up bad, but that has nothing to do Stephen with a. him. You know, See, being it, it, it's part graded of, as a GM. Number one, it's part of the. Number one, it's part of the job. Yes, it does. And number two, he traded a future pick with essentially Jason Tatum for Marcus Fultz. But that's Marcus true. Fultz. I'm just talking that's about the controversy. GM. That's not no, about... I, okay. Stephen, I think he means okay, the burner but, accounts show bad leadership, right, Max? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Like a GM's got to be an attraction, not a repellent to top free agents. Come on, he CJ. can't screw can't up do that. the number one overall pick. You know, like you can't do you can't do those things. He did it. I thought Hinky was good. I agree. Good. He can't Colangelo do those things. Not. I'm just saying when you judge him as a GM, that's not what you look at. That's all I meant. 